Guys, do we have any Brian Holden's fans in the audience? Dylan Saunders. <laughs> Joe Walker. <laughs> all right, all right. How many of you guys are uh, Darren Chris fans? <laughs> yeah, Darren's famous now. <laughs> Real famous. Oh, it's weird. It's weird. It's weird for me. You know. <laughs> yeah. Ever since um. Darren got famous, it's like somehow I'm letting my family know. <laughs> it's like every time I go home, my mom's like, so why aren't you on Glee? <laughs> Darren's on Glee? <laughs> why aren't you on Glee? I'm like, yeah, mom, you know, I really should. should just, should just be on Glee. But <laughs> maybe I'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> right, real quick. <laughs> It's like my mom's obsessed with Darren, you know, she like cuts out all these articles on newspapers, and, like every magazine, she puts them all in this box and waits for me to come home. She's like, what have you been up to? I'm just working? Singing in your little band? Cool. Let's see what Darren's been up to. My whole family, extended family, everybody, even the kids I nanny for, are obsessed with Darren. It's like when he was on the cover of Entertainment Weekly, <laughs> Sebastian, he's a six-year-old boy, cradled the magazine in his arms as he slept. Not a lot. And like now when I try to nanny them, I'll be like, Sebastian, stop trying to play with that open flame. They'll be like, you know what, Meredith? <laughs> Why don't you get on Glee and then you can tell me about it? It's like before Darren got famous, though, my mom, she didn't give a shit. <laughs> Not Darren. It's like we had him over for dinner once with my, him and my parents. And um, it was super fun, you know? He was like so charming and like complimenting the food and even played our piano and sang songs with my dad, and it was really cute. And my mom wasn't having any of it. <laughs> she was like, mm, mm no, because she hates guys. She hates men. <laughs> because she thinks that all men that hang out with me are actually like scheming to take me away in like a dirty car across the country and just, like make me live in a shack and like, dress up as a kitty or something. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter who it is. It could be Mr. Bingley from Pride and Puddies. <laughs> that car. I don't want to hear you say no word unless it's kitty sounds. You understand me? So that's what my mom thinks Darren is about to do. So she's sitting there at dinner, just kind of like going to her little zone, acting like he's a T-Rex, so she just sits really still making him go. And Darren's doing his thing, you know, oh, Miss Stephanie, oh, this food is so good. It's like, God is reaching his hand up, showing God my throat. It's just like, oh, this world, man. It's like, oh, if I could have a mustache like that, I'd be a real man. I want to be just like you. It's just like, my mom's just like, and then the night ended and we left. The next day I was like, huh, what'd you think of Darren? And she was like, who? Like, Darren, he was here last night. Remember, he played piano with dad, he borrowed dad's movie. He seemed really nice. And she's like, you just have so many boys that come along here and do that, you know, it's hard to keep track of them all. <laughs> like, yeah, Mom, I got a line of boys sitting outside the house. Get in there, one at a time, boy. Take all those piano keys. Come on, borrow dance movies. That's what y'all gotta do. One at a time. <laughs> but now that he's famous, it's like everything has changed. The story has completely changed. She's like, oh, I will never forget. And dear Chris, how charming he was sitting at our dinner table. He was so nice, and he was so into Meredith, and she wasn't having any of it. <laughs> now the story's gotten even worse now. It's like, and he proposed to her right there at the dinner table, and she turned him down. Because she's a failure. She turned, she turned down that part on Glee, too. She only likes bones, but 
<laughs> All right, enough talk about Darren, guys. For this last part of my set, I'm going to bring out a friend. This is my friend Nick. We both play music. He wrote this song. We're just going to play a song. Forget it, Darren. This is a love song. I know what you said, girl, I felt the same way. Guys like him aren't normally my cup of tea. I was a job man myself until you came along. <laughs> I love your luscious mane of golden brown hair. Curly locks of chocolate brown, the bottom up and down. And, and those eyes rise. hypnotically hazel. Sometimes they look brown. <laughs> I, I can take, take my own view, I need to settle down. No, I call that the name. Say it out loud. I call that the name. Say it, my love. I call that the name. My love's falsetto. And those calves, impossibly epic, they belong on the high shelf. As though they were dipped in gold and chiseled by Leonardo da Vinci and Christ himself. Yeah, it's funny you bring that up because as a child I walked on my tippy toes, so my calves did develop a little differently than those people. Darling, I run through hell for you, I compromise my morals. Only to be held by you and cut your firm pectoral. <laughs> I call out your name, beautiful boy. I call out your name, source of my bliss. I call out your name, in my pride and joy, my sweet boy. Made for me. 
Sandwiches. <laughs> 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 <laughs>